I'm your host, Logan23. You're joining me for Distant Shores Chapter 9, Battle Lines. The next morning, you and Edward set out early into the jungle looking for the perfect place to hide the compass, among other things. What's in this chest? It's not that big, but it's heavy. As if on cue, you trip over a branch and the chest drops open on your, over your hands and pops open. That explains why it's so heavy. Allow me, Miss Bellamy. Before you can protest, Edward closes the small chest and hoists it out against his chest. You can't help but admire the easy way he's able to carry the heavy chest along with the other bag slung on his shoulder. These are the extra shares of bounties from our last few adventures. Until we've dealt with our new a navy friend, it is best to hide any evidence of piracy. You and all of our best bros now? I am not sure what that means, but I suppose we are as friendly as uh, you can be with a sworn enemy you've never actually met. Actually, exactly. Best bros. Edward seems like he's in a good mood today. Maybe he'll finally answer some of my questions. After all, I did tell him I'm from the future, so it's only fair. Now that you know the truth about me, it's your turn. Did you always want to be a pirate? No. There was quite a f bit of time when I wanted to be a stagecoach driver. Seriously? I. I thought it would be uh, my only way to see the world. And I've always cared for horses, suffice it to say. Uh, a lot has happened since then, some of which I'd gladly forget. My mother did her best she could, but uh, after my father died, she couldn't support us. So I made my own. I was uh, about Jenny's age when I found work on a privateer ship. Edward, you must have been adorable. I assure you I was in no way as charming as young Jenny is. Maybe, but I bet you had your own appeal. Nay, I was surly youth. Was? Edward glares at you, but his expression is soon ruined by a smile. Have I mentioned that you've been spending too much time with Charlie? Hmm, you could have just uh, let me call you adorable. So, so you're, a privateers on a, you're on a privateer ship. I learned many things on that first ship. How to sail, how to prop, how a proper crew works, what it takes to be a good captain. And what does it take? An unshakable will, the ability to inspire loyalty and offer it in return, and the strength to shoulder responsibility when things go wrong. Edward. Tis but the truth, Miss Bellamy. I demand obedience from my crew, therefore I am accountant for their lives, their safety, and their future. A captain who doesn't understand that obligation has no business commanding people. Why do I get the feeling he's talking about the Admiral again? He's been opening up to me so much this morning. Maybe now is the perfect time to try and get to the bottom of this once and for all. Good luck. You put a hand on Edward's arm, stopping his progress. He looks at you, you can see a flicker of something in his eyes, although you can't quite place it. Edward, please tell me what happened with the Admiral. If you don't, I'll assume the worst. I know he's pure evil, but that doesn't really narrow it down at all. His eyes, his voice dropping to a rough whisper. <sighs> Peyton, it isn't that I don't trust you. You must know by now that I do. Then what is it? I'm no hero. You know that already, but this story... I would not blame you if you... If hearing it made you hate me. Step closer to Edward, and rub his cheek gently guiding his gaze to meet yours. What I know is that you're an honorable man. Nothing you did in your past can change who you are now. You should not make such a reckless response. I promise. Edward pulls back, then unsheaths a sword to cut down a vine walking your path. His scowl has returned. Seriously, Edwards, what's your plan? To run away from my questions once you're chopped down the whole ju jungle? No, I... He cuts off as the sword slices through another branch, felling it easily. He's breathing hard, although you know it's not from overexerting himself physically. Fine, if you must know... Remember how I said I'd started aboard a privateer ship? I was damn good at it. Quick on my feet, nimble in the ringing. I had a few, or I had a feel for the sea. And the ship became my home. 
In time, the captain took me in as a mentor. He'd uh, lost his only son, and I had never had much of a father. So, you found your calling. Aye. There's nothing like standing at the helm in that first moment when the wind truly catches the sails. You can smell the salt in the air, feel the wind through the movement and the deck beneath your feet. Edward smiles at you, and for a moment, it eases the sadness in his eyes. I became the first mate when I was just thirteen, then got command of my own ship a few years later. I was young, reckless, foolhardy. I wanted enough money so that neither my mother nor I would ever uh, have to worry again. That's when I met Francis Cochrane. Wait, just Francis? He wasn't an admiral yet? Nay, not yet. But he still had the power that comes from being an officer in the Royal Navy. He made me an offer. It was too good to be true. I know that now. But back then, I only saw the money. What did he have you do? I was his lackey, doing his bidding without question. I attacked the ships he wanted me to attack, sank the ones he wanted me to sink. I knew what I was doing. Couldn't be right. But he paid well, and I was blind to my life of luxury beyond anything I could have imagined as a child. I grew up living on the streets with my mother, and I was able to buy her a proper house within a year. Life was good. As long as I didn't ask questions. But things couldn't go on like that forever. Nay, I began to suspect Cochrane had more nefarious intentions after the first year. That he crossed a line. Edward stops as if he's reliving the moment in his mind, his entire body's tense, and you find yourself holding your breath as you wait for him to continue. You slip your hand into his, giving him a reassuring squeeze. His fingers are warm and calloused as they tighten around yours. I'm here, Edward. I hope you still will be after you hear what came next. It was a village, not unlike Tiburon. Pretty little speck of land that the Admiral told me was abandoned because of poor trade climbing. He said it was the perfect hideout. He told me a Spanish commander was hiding there with his crew of thieves and murderers. I had crossed paths with the commander before and knew how dangerous he was. Edward. I opened fire on the village. I left it in ruins. The Admiral had told me to destroy the village and leave, but I had to be sure. I need to know the monster would never hurt anyone again. He takes a step away from you, turning to hide his face. The ground was strewn with the bodies of innocent villagers. Families. Children. Edward's voice breaks. It's clear he feels the pain as strongly as he did that day. The Admiral claimed they were providing cover for the Commander. That they were as guilty as he was. But we found his outpost hidden in the outskirts of town. I'm still not convinced the villagers even knew he was there. Edward, you couldn't have known the Admiral was lying. You thought you were doing the right thing. The Admiral is responsible for hurting his people, not you. You give me too much credit, Miss Bellamy. All the warning signs I ignored, all the questions I didn't ask. I'm not saying you couldn't have done better, but will you ever make a mistake like that again? Never. And you plan to stop the Admiral, so he can't do this ever again, right? You know I do. Then that's all you can do, Edward. You can't change the past, but you can try to fix the hurt you caused and stop it from happening again. Punishing yourself forever won't help anyone. I hadn't thought of it like that. Edward is still upset, but he also seems lighter, as if sharing the secret has lifted some of his burden. Thank you for trusting me with this. I know it wasn't easy. Thank you for listening. You continue into the jungle until you find Edward Luck. You point to the mouth of a cave almost completely hidden among the brush. Good eye, Miss Bellamy. We'll have the treasure inside the cave away from prying eyes. You enter the cave and look around, searching for the perfect spot to hide the compass and treasure. In plain sight near the entrance, as far away as possible in the back, separately from the treasure chest. We should dig separate holes. If someone manages to find the treasure, then maybe they'll stop looking for the compass. Exact. Excellent thinking, Miss Bellamy. The two of you get to work on opposite sides of the cave. Edward with the chest near the entrance, and you with the compass near the back. 
soon. It's time to drop the compass in the hole. You pull it out of your pocket, ignoring the soft glow as your skin touches it. As you set the compass down into the hole, memories from your home come bloodying over you. Your friends, your family, your career. Hmm. I could share the awesome parts of the future with everyone here. It would blow their damn minds if they even believe me. Are you thinking about home? How could you tell? He brushes the dirt from his hands and lightly touches the center of your forehead. I've noticed you sometimes crease your brow right there, and you get a faraway look in your eyes. It's just so different here. How so? Tell me one of your favorite things about home. My favorite things are definitely... Indoor plumbing. I am unfamiliar with these... those words. I'll put it this way, the process of relieving yourself becomes a lot less gross in the future. You won't have to use an outhouse or a chamber pond. Even the ship heads become a lot cleaner and less smelly. That certainly sounds appealing. You can also easily wash your hands right after, with just a twist of a faucet. Oh, and don't get me started on the bubble baths and the hot showers. Edward come, stops covering the hole with the dirt for a moment. I suppose I hadn't uh, rightly considered how difficult it must be for you to live in the past. Honestly, it's not so bad. There are things about the future that I miss, yeah, but being here with you and your crew... It's the first time in a long time that I've truly felt like I belonged. I'm pleased to hear you say that, Miss Bellamy. Edward continues shoveling again, shooting you a look as he completely covers the hidden treasure. It's uncanny how the more we uh, I learn about you, the more mysterious you become. Maybe I just like keeping you on your toes. You certainly have a talent for it. Finally, you and Edward finish your work. You take one last look around the cave, committing the hiding spot to memory. I will come back for the compass and find out if I can if it can lead me home. You emerge from the cave, squinting against the bright Caribbean sunlight. Once your eyes adjust, you and Edward start back towards the beach. So, what now? Now, we return to the others and make sure all of the ship is fully repaired, and we leave this place behind. But not forever. Nay, nah, just until the Navy's scourge is dealt with. You follow Edward to the jungle, his worth echoing in your mind. He deserves worse. Dare I ask what he said to you in the market to, to burn to justify your harsh assessment? Oh, I thought we were talking about the Admiral, not Oliver. Suffice it to say, I don't like being lied and manipulated. Especially not by a guy I like. He will get what he deserves, Miss Bellamy. Of that, I can assure you. Oh god, no. Edward ducks its bright, colorful wings flash overhead. You look up and see him. Hey, it's a cockatiel. The bird lands on a branch nearby and cocks her head to look at you. Hello, aren't you a pretty thing? Pretty thing, pretty thing. Ah! I should offer my arm as a perch. Squawk back. Offer my arm as a perch. You hold out your arm invitingly. Come here. I won't hurt you. Ah! The bear hesitates for a moment and then hops from the branch to your forearm. Hi there, beautiful. You two are truly made for each other. Perhaps you should bring her along. We haven't had a pet aboard since Robert left, although I can't say I miss that damned bird. Damned bird! Damned bird! Hmm, she is gorgeous, and she already hates Robert and his pet, so that's a plus. Adopt the parrot as part of your crew. You never know when it'll be useful to have a winged friend. She'll also be added to your captain's cabin. Mmm, adopt the parrot. There's no way I couldn't resist adopting a freaking parrot. Freaking bird! Freaking bird! Ah! See? She gets me. 
The parrot nuzzles her cheek and you grin at Edward. He smiles back. What will you name her? So many choices, but she's definitely a... Polly wanna crack her, why not? Isn't that right, Polly? That's right, that's right. Impressive. Polly lightly nibbles your ear and you realize... Oh, you're hungry. Crackers, of course. Some leaves and seeds. Mm, crackers. Well, you want a cracker? Oh, Lord. You pull some hard tack out of your pocket and offer it to your new friend. What are you doing, Miss Bellamy? Mm, trust me, where I come from, this makes perfect sense. Well, he sniffs the hard tack a little and then makes a tentative bite. Party with a cracker! Party with a cracker! I wonder, do you think I could use this to teach her some tricks? At this point, I have no doubt you can do anything you set your mind to, including taming a wild parrot in a single afternoon. What do you think, Polly? Do you want to learn some something cool? Cool, something cool. I'll take that as a yes. Fly loop de loop, like a nose dive. Loop de loop. Okay, Polly, are you ready for this? First, you fly in a straight line because the bird understands you. Then you circle up and round until you make a complete loop, like this. Show the parrot to motion with your hand, holding a snack between your fingers while his eyes are rivers between your fingers. Now you try. Ah. It takes a few attempts, but with a bit of patience and a lot of crackers, you manage to get Polly to complete the trick. Aren't you a talented bird? Talented bird, talented bird. Ah. I know I said you could do it, but I must have made him. I'm still impressed. Good. Then for my final trick, I'm going to teach Polly to say... Imagine if we could actually see what's after your... But Pixelberry still haven't contemplated how their app actually works. <sighs> Repeat after me. I love them. Polly, beach please. Beach please? <laughs> Beach please. That's a unique turn of phrase. Which is why it fits me and Polly perfectly. Mm, beach please! Soon you start back <laughs> towards the beach with Polly, perched on your shoulder. You know, Robert trained his parent to come when he whistled. It's no, uh, loop the loop, but it might still prove useful. It represses his lips and whistles a quick series of notes. Polly's head perks up and her wings ruffle. Do you like that, Polly? Is that how I should call you from now on? Bitch, please! <laughs> mm, I win the internet today. I'm gonna take that as a yes. It takes a few tries before you get the nose right, but Polly and Edward guide you through it. You're a clever girl, aren't you? Clever girl! Clever girl! Ah. You grin at Edward. Looks like Robert has some use after all. Still debatable, but I appreciate your positive outlook, Miss Bellamy. Now, we really should find the others before they worry we've gotten hopelessly lost. You bet the top of Polly's head and she nuzzles your hand. After a year. Eventually, you make your way back to the beach and rejoin the rest of the crew. Beach blues! Beach blues! Polly takes off from your shoulder and flies over the crew as if observing them in turn. What's this now? I see you found a new friend. Uh, everyone, meet Polly. Polly, this is your new family. Say hello. She's beautiful. I can't wait to teach her to some tricks. I believe Miss Bellamy already beat you to that axe. What do parrots eat? Henry, you'll have to prepare something for her. Aye, she's a fine bird, that one. Can I hold her? Maybe once we get set to sail. And um, she's a bit more settled. Polly finishes her circle around the group and settles back on your shoulder. You pet her feathers lightly. Good girl. Ah, good girl, good girl. And returns to Charlie with an update. Is uh, everything all right? Ready? Aye. You two, two took care of it. 
He looks over your shoulders at the jungle you just came from. Aye, our business here is done. He turns to the rest of the crew. Anchors away. Anchors away! You and your crew return to the Poseidon's Ravine, casting off and leaving the small deserted island behind. Peyton, can you help me with the sails before we get out to the open waters? Of course. Quickly scale the net ladder up the main sail, and you take a moment to appreciate the wind in your face and the smell of the sea. Isn't this nice, Polly? Oh, wind of the hell, wind of the hell. Hmm, I can't believe I'm sailing a freaking pirate ship. I'm basically the next Annie Bonnie. Edward was right. I have adjusted this life well. Peyton, are you alright? You shake yourself from your thoughts to find Jenny has climbed up after you. I'm sorry, Jenny, just got distracted. The world seems a lot smaller up here, doesn't it? Smaller and less scary. You look back over the horizon. Yeah, it does. After a moment, Jenny nudges you with her elbow. We should probably get back to work, eh? Work. You slink along the yard arm to reach for the knot, keeping the canvas tied to the wood. The canvas unfurls, the wind snaps, or catches it with a snap. Soon the ship is skimmering along easily across the water. You return to the main deck, and now that she's been repaired, the Poseidon's Revenge sails like a dream. Look out below! Acton drops down from the rigging, catching the rope ladder with his legs as, uh, at the last moment. He laughs as he swings her upside down. Looks that was close, you almost didn't make it. Aye, but that's where the fun is, is not making it close. I'll show you a real performance, Peyton. Ada walks lightly on the railing that surrounds the deck. Every pitch of the ship threatens to dislodge her. Hang on. Excellent idea! She springs forward into a handstand, slowly making her way toward you, balancing precariously on her hands and bolts onto the deck. You're right, holding on was much easier. Captain, the cannons are ready. Thank you, Jonas. Do you think we'll need the cannons already? You never know when a fight might break out, Peyton. Better be prepared and caught on a weird. The Navy Lieutenant ship is likely still in these waters, and I intend to find it. Edward stalks away to take the helm, and you watch him go. An uneasy feeling in the pit of your stomach. But isn't that exactly what Oliver wants? You think back on your brief night with the man. Second thought, what do I know about the Oliver once? The guy is impossible to read. But do you have a moment? You turn to Charlie with a smile, but she doesn't smile back. I don't think I've ever seen Charlie this serious. So what's wrong? <clears throat> if we're going to tangle with the Navy again, I think you should have this. Charlie's pistol. Get a closer look. The engraved pistol gleams in the sunlight, and you can't help but admire the movies in the handle. It's beautiful, but I don't know if I can take that. Of course you can. I want you to have it. And don't worry, I'll show you how to use it. She steps behind you and wraps her arms around you so she can show you how to hold the pistol. You try not to get distracted by how close she is. Charlie. I know you can hold your own now, but I'm trying to make sure you have the tools to hold your own and win. Add the pirate pistol to your arsenal. Learn how to make use from it. Uh, Charlie and this is scene. The weapon will be added to your captain's cap. Take the pistol! Take the pistol! You hold your hand now for the pistol. Show me what I have to do. Charlie leads you over to a relatively empty part of the deck. Do you know how to clean a pistol? How to load it? I picked up a bit from uh, Jonas and Ginny. And a strange fighting class, but those were prop guns, nothing like this. Good, then you'll just need to brief refresher. Charlie walks you through the steps and you do your best to follow along. Then she reaches into a crate to pull out something you can't quite see. Now that we've gotten the boring part of the way, let's do a bit of target practice. Charlie presents you with a couple of bottles with a flourish. She lines them up along the railing then moves you to stand about ten feet back from them. Take your position. Don't put the trigger yet. I want to check your stance. Raise the pistol in front of you and point it at one of the bottles. Charlie walks around with a critical eye. 
Mm. Set your feet a bit further apart. Good. Relax your shoulders. She reaches out to adjust your posture here and there. Every touch feels the fire growing within you as her at her close proximity. But do not raise your weapon until you're ready to shoot, to kill. Even if you're just killing a bottle, pistols are not to be trifled with, understand? Hmm. Understood. Good. At first you take aim, with both eyes open. Then you let out a breath. That will help you release any tension you might be holding. Last far at will. That's a pretty long checklist. You do that every time you shoot in a fight. I I practice so much that it's become second nature, and you can too, starting now. You nod and then raise your pistol. Shoot. The bottle shakes as the bullet whizzes by, but it doesn't fall. I missed. On your first attempt, try again. I should hit the target, miss on purpose, so she shows me again. Mm, I miss again. You raise the pistol and cast a sly glance over to where Charlie's watching it. She spots your gaze and raises a questioning eyebrow. You pull the trigger of missing wine. Hmm. You'll have better luck with your eyes on the target. Who says my eyes weren't on my target? Hmm. You could interpret that in one of two ways, but moving on. She grins as she moves closer. Do you need me to show you it again? Yes, please. Raise the pistol in your position. She stands behind you, chest pressed to your back. You can feel her warm breath on your neck as she repeats the instructions. Take your aim. Breathe out to release any tension. Then fire. This time you do as she says, hitting the bottle and shattering the glass. Well done, love. You'll be the best marksman in no time. I had a good teacher, although she can be very distracting at times. No more than her students. Now, we just must really put your skills to the test with a contest. What kind of contest? You and me, whoever hits more bottles wins a prize. Are you ready? Charlie sets up another row of bottles along the railing and the two of you take your marks. And begin. Shoot. Shoot. Is this, is this a... Wow. I think there could have been a better way to do this, but... Gotcha. You turn to Charlie with a smirk because the last bottle shatters. So, what do I win? Charlie looks at all the broken glass and impressed gleam in her eye. Ah, you earned a prize. Fair enough. What do you want? Hmm, I want a kiss. Then come collect your prize. You pull down your pistol and stride over to her in two steps, taking your face in your hands and your lips meet in the middle, and you grin as her arms wrap around you. She holds you tight, pressing her body to yours as you deepen the kiss. Charlie. You kiss a fiery path from her lips down her neck and then up to the spot behind her ear. It makes her shiver and back to her luscious lips. Her hands travel down and down your back, then into your hair, always pulling you closer. Peyton. After one last kiss, Charlie steps away from you with a playful grin. Hey, what about my prize? You'll have to do more than shoot a few bottles if you want anything more than that. Duly noted. You lean in and kiss her cheek before picking up your pistol. We'd best return to the others. You feel comfortable with your new weapon? You spin the pistol around your finger, growing more confident by the minute. They didn't have safeties back then, but good job. Oh yeah, I'm ready to take down some evil dudes with this bad boy. Good, I, I think. Two more things to go. Grinner as the two of you cross the main deck. Just then, Henry calls out from the crow's nest. 
Say hello, ships approaching, they're flying navy colors. Edward hurries to the rail, his spyglass in hand, he peers through it, then growls. It's your friend from the navy. What do we do? We stand and fight. Stand and fight, stand and fight. Edward, are we ready for this? Aye, we have to be. He turns and addresses the crew, his voice booming over the deck. Prepare yourselves, this is one battle those bastards will not win. Rush down to where Jenny and Jonas are bustling about next to the cannons. I'm strong enough to load the cannonballs on my own, Jonas. Ah, oh, that may be last, but we'll be ready faster if we all pitch in. Here, Jenny, I'll hand you the cannonballs. You load them like an assembly line. A what? Uh, just take this. You hand her the cannonball and focus on the task at hand. Before long, Poseidon's revenge draws alongside the Navy ship. From above deck, you can hear Edward shouting commands. And fire! You hold the flame to each fuse in sequence. Reload! And fire! The cannonballs zip through the air, taking out one of their masts. We got their four masts, Captain! And look, they're running up a white flag! Really, it's that easy. And they didn't fire back at all. Really? They rejoin the others on the main deck. They're surrendering. Do you think they have fresh meat in their stores? You're always singing with your stomach, aren't you, Henry? What do you expect from a cook? But why would they surrender? We barely hit them. I think it was too easy. If Oliver's supposed to be the Admiral's best man, then he should be able to put up more of a fine. Aye, you've got the right of it. Even from here, you can see their deck is mostly empty. Where's the loot They've got a skillet, Kukuru. That means a ripe for attacking. Taking an attack. Henry, wait. But it's too late. Henry rushes across the deck, grabs a rope, and swings towards the navy sheep with surprising grace. Blast. Had a feeling about this. Charlie, take charge. I'm going after Henry. If you're going, then I'm going to... You jump off the railing and grab hold of a rope. You swing out across the water before Hedward can protest. The deck of the Navy frigate is eerily empty. When you land, the few Navy sailors who are there scatter when they see you. Start looking for him. You peer around crates behind cannons, searching for the old cook. Psst, Henry, where are you? Miss Bellamy, get back here! Peyton, it's a trap! You hear a muffled cry to your left. You take a step in that direction. Now! The Navy crewmen jump out of their hiding spots and attack. For the crown! Ambush. No, oh, what a surprise. One of the men rushes right at you, sword raised. Pirate scum! Out of nowhere, Polly dives at the man's head, shrieking, rage that he dare attack you. As if he's never encountered a parrot before. He ducks and covers his head, and you take advantage of the distraction. Take that. You slash his arm with your sword, opening in a long gash. The man howls in pain and drops his weapon. You kick his sword across the deck out of his reach. He cowers in your shadow. You turn back to your new pet. Polly, you have uh, to go back to the ship. Find Charlie. Tell her it's a trap. It's a trap! It's a trap! Exactly. Now go. The parrot swoops through the air, pecking at a few Navy officers as she goes before flying back towards the revenge. Oh, the warning is enough to save them. Charlie will know what to do, right? Foolish girl, do you think a bird can save you? You turn to find a Navy officer bearing down on you, swinging his sword low. Strike first, parry, duck. But a parry. Manage to raise your sword in time to block his blow. Boy! You'll have to be quicker than that. If they would have offered a jump option, I would have taken them. You shove him back, and he staggers into one of his com comrades. One down. You make your way across the deck, trying to find Henry and Edward. You turn to find another Navy soldier aiming a pistol right at you. Stop right there! Hmm, this feels familiar. Shoot at him. Rush him. Hide. Shoot at him. Draw Charlie's pistol, loaded pistol from your belt, and level one at him. Aim, breathe, fire. 
He shoots the pistol right out of his hand. He shouts, cradling his fist to his chest. <laughs> you cross the deck in two strides. Flip your pistol in your hand and knock the officer out with a clean blow from the heavy handle. He crumples to the deck and you turn to find a few other Navy soldiers staring at you in wonderment. You'd be wise to stop underestimating me. Yeah, because I watched a lot of One Piece and we're doing this. In the chaos of the battle, you realize some of the Navy soldiers have stopped fighting and are instead watching Edward and Oliver. Lieutenant, this feud is between you and me. Tell your men to stand down and we can duel like real warriors. If Edward can convince Oliver to fight him one-on-one, -on -one, then maybe I can find Henry and get out of here while everyone's distracted. You're just saying that because you, there's only three of you. Even if the rest of your crew tried to save you, you'd still be fiercely outnumbered. That said, I do love a good fight. And it's been so long since I've had a proper duel. Well, I accept on guard. The two men circle, one another blades flashing as they thrust and parry. Damn, Oliver's good. He can't even be as good as Edward. I expected more from the great pirate captain, Baltimore. Just enough to beat you. Is this the best the Royal Navy has to offer? Oliver growls as he attacks with a complicated twist of his sword. Edward steps back as he blocks the blow, and the crowd gasps, mesmerized. Oliver retreats a step, swinging his weapon in the sunlight. I must warn you, I've learned many styles of sword play from many masters. You'll be hard pressed to find a strategy you don't know how to defeat. Hmm, but what about if there is no strategy? Ah, that explains it. Your approach is so... academic. I think you'll find, Lieutenant, that in the real world, academic study only counts for so much. Edward launches into a counterattack that almost slices Oliver across the chest. You may have studied different types and styles of dueling, but I've experienced them, I've fought them, I've beaten them. And I'll beat you, too. Edward's intensity makes you shiver as their weapon slice across the air, coming together with a mighty clash. Edward knocks Oliver off the balance and is about to go for a disarming blow. Then one of Oliver's crew grabs you from behind. Got you. Hey! Struggle against him, spit in his face. I'm gonna spit. Spit directly in his face, aiming for his eye. Ah, oh, you filthy scum! Mm, I got COVID too. <laughs> Goddamn it, Karen! Stop it. The officer lets go of you to grab his face. Don't dare touch me again. But it's too late. Your cry distracts Edward, giving Oliver an open. He thrusts his blade now Oliver's shoulder. Yeah. <clears throat> no. You grab from behind again and toss to the deck in front of Edward. His chest heaves as his eyes lock with yours. Hayden. The pain of suppression makes your heart ache. You wish you could go to him but comfort him, but there's nothing you can do but watch in horror. I yield. See? Wasn't too difficult, was it? You people cheated! Oliver steps back and his men move in to tie up Edward. Take the prisoners below. Well, Oliver, wait. Do not address the lieutenant like that. The rest of you are prepared to board the pirate ship. Our work isn't over yet. But sir, they're escaping! Sure enough, in the chaos of the fight, Poseidon's revenge was able to pull away from the Navy frigate. Polly must have given Charlie my message. Blast! At least the crew got away. You look over to where Henry and Edward are being dragged below deck. Good job, Henry. Good job. But what are we gonna do? It's easy. I've seen this play in many, many plays. It's where suddenly, out of nowhere, our ship will come back to save us. When the Admiral is least expecting it, we will draw on our own ambush. And in the meantime, it means we get to spend time with Oliver and maybe convince him to spare us, or maybe, I don't know what. Anyway, without further ado, thank you all for watching. You know what to do, it's up on the screen. Um, I'll be streaming on Twitch later, Animal Crossing, Fallout 76. Tons of new games also are going to be hitting the uh, channel here soon. And um, I want to also thank each and every one of you that have um, kind of sent your support through one way or another during uh, my issue. So it uh, it means at least something. Um, but I'm still having to, to do this fight on my own. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you all later. Peace.